Mix the hues, create those fuses of beauty make. Throw it on, let's see what happens. This is fun, it's pure passion. The colors are bright, it's a sight to see. If we can do it, you can too. Just follow me, like and subscribe. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. And an exciting day today. So I've just had the delivery man arrive and resiners have sent me to test their um, bubble removal machine, the airless bubble removal machine. So I'm looking forward to testing that out just to see if it makes a difference. Um, I've also had a few other deliveries, so quite exciting. Have the, uh, the standard large jewelry molds arrive and I've also got Finally, um, some alcohol inks come through from Let's Resin, including the Sinker White. So looking forward to testing those out and finally testing that Petri effect. I've not tried it yet. Um, I tried it briefly with some of my own inks, which didn't seem to work. So I'm hoping that this has a difference. And then I've also got a standard square mould, which I thought would make some pretty cool key rings. So we're going to get straight to it. Um, test out this uh, machine, see how it works, see if it gets rid of those bubbles, mix up some resin and try that Petri effect. So join us in the video. Um, we've also launched our shop now on Etsy, so that's brilliant. If, if there's any of the pendants that you like in the videos, they should be up for sale. And also don't forget, if you're gonna buy anything from resiners, we have a discount code for you, which is CCUK. But without further ado, let's get to the workshop. Or let's see how these work. We're in the workshop, remember that PPE, uh, gloves and respirator, uh, whenever you're working with epoxy. But no, really excited for this project. Um, as I say, I've been waiting for a while for these inks to come through and hopefully we'll get a good result. Just want to thank you all for subscribing as well. If you already have, we're already up to over 6,000 people. Um, and we're starting to get some comments as well, which is nice. Um, some of them have been given us um, a bit of critique, which I really appreciate. It's the only way we're going to improve the channel. So here we go. Just going to get these molds out and mix up some resin. Quite handy that these cups came with the... Um, the resin is air removal machine. So I'm gonna go for around about six ounces and see what we get out of it. Always pour in your A before your B, it just seems to mix better. Again, if you've got any suggestions on something that you'd want us to try as well, Put it in the comments and we will try and make it happen. So I've sped this up uh, five times. So you haven't got to sit here watching me uh, mix epoxy for five minutes. But you want to go from that streaky finish to almost a crystal clear finish that you can almost see through. You will get bubbles in it at this stage. Uh, but we're going to remove those with this uh, bubble removal machine and see how we get on with it. I didn't do an unboxing on it because I thought, do you know what, it, it, it's pretty much four pieces in the box um, and you don't really need to uh, see the assembly. But it's, as you can see, it's full of bubbles straight after mixing. This is the machine. It doesn't take up a lot of space, which is useful when you've got a tiny little workshop like mine. So I've just put it in there. Um, it can do up to 500 mil in epoxy as well, which is pretty cool. And you can already see it. All I've done is switch, up, switch it on with the power button. It's a five minute cycle and look at those bubbles rising to the top. Again, I've sped this up so you haven't got to watch it for five minutes. But look at all those bubbles, which would um, otherwise be in your work. So, so far it seems to work. And it, the, the key thing for me is it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's not noisy and it's very, very easy to operate. This isn't a sponsored video, but we do have a discount code, which is CCUK if you wanna get one. I've used it a few times now since filming this video. And uh, I'll tell you what, it really does make a difference in getting the bubbles out of your finished piece. So now just going to let the gas out. There's a little notch on the back. You open it and it releases all of the air. That's how it works.
and then look at that it's almost crystal clear so in a couple of minutes the rest of those bubbles will have just come up to the top and gone now you can do it for another five minute cycle if you want i chose not to for this and i don't think i noticed a single bubble in the finished products but um yeah from my point of view simple to operate reasonably priced compared to some of the pressure pots i've seen it doesn't take up a lot of space so if you can afford it and you don't want bubbles in your art go and get yourself one right that these are the uh alcohol inks uh lots of different colors you get this is the 26 ink set that i got um and including the two different sinkers that come in there as well and you even get a drawing pen to open them with so pretty good little kit um looking forward to seeing if it makes a difference because i've tried this with cheaper inks from timu and i had very very poor results so um let's see what happens First thing I'm going to do is um, open up a few of these inks so that I'm ready. Uh, just leaving the resin at the moment to just settle. And a top tip for you, when you are opening these inks, you're going to want to have some kitchen roll or something nearby because when you pull the pin back out, it will spray ink everywhere. So it's a case of literally putting the pin in, having the kitchen towel behind it, um and then that will catch any of the ink as it comes out of the bottle so i use some kitchen roll it's fine when the pin goes in but as you pull it out you'll get that little bit of ink that squirts out and if you're not careful with a bit of kitchen roll it will go everywhere so just make sure you do that and whilst i've been opening them um i've just left the resin and look at that clarity for you hardly any bubbles in there so again if you want one of these machines i would recommend it um, because the end product i didn't find a single mini bubble in there so i'm just going to fill up the, the 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 pieces that i want with the resin i'm going to speed it up so again you don't have to uh, sit here watching me fill each individual mold I'm hoping with more practice as well, I'll get better at this because I seem to always do it a little bit too quickly and slightly overfill. And now for the ink. So um, I wanted to, I knew that I wanted to create a few with a bit of a fire effect. So I'm just going in here with a yellow, just a few drops on it. And then I'm going to follow that up with an orange and a red. Um, and try and create some, I suppose, a bit of a fire wisp effect, which if you wait till the end, you'll see the result. And we got some pretty cool effects. And one thing I have noticed with these inks is they spread a lot better than the cheap ones that I bought off Timo. So whether that will have an impact in the end result, we will see. This is the orange. And again, just a couple of drops, didn't want to overdo it. And now going in with the standard red. Uh, I think there's about three different shades of red in the set and they're all slightly different as well. So some of them are more pink than others, but I just decided the standard red for this one could hopefully give us a bit of a flame effect. And looking at the uh, colour already, it already looks a bit like a flame. But yeah, so far the inks seem to spread a lot better. Um, so maybe there's a difference depending on what brand you use, as to uh, how well they spread. I think with this overall Petri effect, the inks you use will make a huge difference to the end result because uh, the ones I've tried in the past, as I say, don't work. Um, didn't really get the effect, but with these Let's Resin ones, um, I think the, the end product looked really good. This is that sinker white. 
And what I'm going to do is just drop a drop in for each color. And try and make sure that the whole back is covered. And then you see the inks just, just sort of dancing away on the surface, which is pretty cool to watch, actually. And then once I've done these ones, I'm going to speed up the video. So again, it isn't a, uh, a one hour video of you guys watching me do this, but it's going to be the same process, just different colors, um, dropping those colors in and then adding one drop of the sinker white on top of those colors um, for, for each one. If there's any sort of uh, negative spaces, what I did is I just added an extra drop of the white. So hopefully you'd get a bit of white coming through as well. But just look at the variety of colours here. It is absolutely amazing, the different colours, and they seem more vibrant than the others. Um, I realised at the end that I had forgot these two in the corner, so uh, maybe that's a lesson to be learnt for the future. <laughs> but yeah, the colours that you get off these, they seem really, really vibrant compared to some of the other inks that I've used. Um, and again, just look at the, the way that they blend together. And again, I hadn't seen any muddying at this point either, even though I'd, I'd used some probably quite questionable colours, um, there was no muddying. And at this point, realised that actually I'd nearly forgot that one as well. And again, these, these, this is the end effect. So the trick is with this sinker white as well is to leave it. I left it 30 minutes before I came back for the stir. And by then the resin starts to harden and thicken a little bit. So we're just coming back now after waiting. Um, and you can see all the inks have settled and now it's time for the stir. And again, you don't have to do the stir. You could just leave it as it is. Um, but I think it just adds a little bit more detail to the to the, the, the finished product. So all I'm going to be using here is a toothpick. And on this one, I'm just going to probably go in at the corner. I was just testing there that there was a little bit of a stringy effect to the resin, which is what you want. Um, it shows that it's ready for that stir. And I'm going to try and zoom in for these. And as you can see, just using a toothpick. And with this one, just decided to try and bring that yellow through to make a bit of a, a wispy effect. Make sure you wipe off your toothpick or whatever you're using as well every time it leaves that resin. Just speeding this up as well. But again, you can just see I'm just trying to swirl in different designs for every piece so we get a slightly different look.
And actually, the ones in the in, in, in the end that I really liked were probably the simplest of swirls, where it was almost just like that straight wisp that I just did there, or the straight circle, um, where I just sort of swirled it round. Um, and they seem to give really, really striking effects at the end. But when I do the, the circular technique, I try and start with the lightest colour and then bring that into the centre. And again, take your time. This is sped up, um, I think, eight times. So I'm not actually this quick at doing it. And this, this trident design that I put in as well, that came out really, really well at the end. And again, with these two, just trying to make a few more flame effects. And again, apologies about the camera work, but hopefully it will get better as we uh, continue. Um, I think I need a better stand, if I'm being completely honest, to enable me to get a better view. But hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, some of them I'm just going for a standard swirly effect, some of them I'm going for circles, some of them I'm going for a, a bit of a wispy effect. But I think I had timed it just about right as well because the designs that I'm putting in actually stayed in, so uh, I think that's that's always a good sign. And this one, t t in the end, turned out to be my favourite. And I don't know how, but it, it kind of looks like a bit of a flower. And that's it now. Leave it until the next day. Now let's have a look at what they look like the next day. So they looked pretty cool from this side anyway. Um, I did notice that there was a bit of negative space in this one. So I'm going to have to think about, do I put a back on them or, or what do I do with them? Um, and I decided that actually I think it'd be a good idea to just put a back on them. Now, if you are going to do this, it's easier to do it when they're still in the mould. So initially I thought I'd just put a little bit of chameleon powder on it and see what that looked like but soon realized that that did not stick because the epoxy is so smooth. So if I was gonna try that again, what I'd probably do is sand the back of the piece, rough it up a little bit, which would make the, uh, the chameleon um, powder adhere to it. But it just wasn't adhering at this point. So I decided nah, that wasn't gonna work. And that's what this is all about, experimenting, you know? Some things will work, some things won't. So I got this iridescent blue nail powder and I thought I would try that. Again, just applying it with a little paintbrush and this seemed to adhere a lot better than the uh, chameleon powder did. So not applying it to all of them, just the ones where I can visibly see that the ink hadn't completely covered the space. Um, and a couple of the others just to see what the effect is um, in, in the end product. I've since done another video with um, trying to combine the two. So I've had a bit of the iridescent blue powder in the um, epoxy before I've added the inks. Um, and with that one, if I'm being honest, I think that the, um, the glitter almost takes away from the, um, the Petri effect that you get. So not sure if i'm going to be keen on doing that again um, but as a backing it worked really well and and you could see through it without it taking away from the the petri effect in the piece the problem is if you put it in the actual resin it gives you a bit of a galaxy effect which is great if that's what you're looking for but i think when you're doing the petri effect it's the petri sh that should be the standout piece not the glitter so just giving these a blow to get the excess off And now I'm just adding some black mica uh, mixed into UV. And this is the, the only mistake I've made at this point is I have mixed a little bit too much mica powder in. So when I um, tried to cure it with the UV lamp, 
it cured, or at least I thought it did, but it didn't cure properly. So again, if you're applying black mica powder into UV resin, do it, don't add too much mica powder and do it in multiple coats rather than what I did here, which was one thick, dark coat. Problem you've got is the UV light can't get through and therefore it doesn't fully cure. So actually when I demolded these at the end, you'll find although it looked cured and it felt cured, there was little pockets that opened up and UV resin went everywhere. So I then had to off camera back them again um with with just standard two-part epoxy so just make sure if you're going to do it with uv that you do it in thin coats and again i think the problem was when i used it, this darker backing as well is for me in the end product it actually took away some of the radiance of the colors um and i wanted it to make them pop now i think it did with some but others, it seemed to take away the the vibrance of the colour. So again, maybe next time I wouldn't choose to do this because actually if I'd have just done it with clear, the great thing with that is, is you're going to have double effect. So you're going to have the Petri effect on the front and I suppose the, the reverse effect as well, which to me looked just as cool. But that's what this is all about, learning from your mistakes so that you don't have to make them again next time, hopefully. And you guys, by watching this video, hopefully don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. And there we go, just curing it with the lamp. So I ended up curing them for about four minutes each side, um, but unfortunately at the end, it still hadn't cured through. So make sure you do thin coats if you're gonna back them with you. Some chameleon powder to that black. It just gives the um, the black backing just a bit more interest. Um, are they perfect? Probably not, but the main thing we wanna see is this front. And I've just realized the worry with backing them is I back them before I've actually checked the front, so we don't know if we've actually got the uh, the Petri effects that we actually wanted. But let's have a look. Let's start off with the small ones. And the reason I did this size one is to, I thought it'd be a perfect size to fit into a cufflink mold. And I actually wear those a lot in the daytime job. Wow. And if you can see, we have managed to get that petri effect so it's almost like a a flower um and for the first attempt you know pretty happy with that so let's hope we've got some more stunning results go with this pair next wow again it's it's almost like that little sort of bit of fluff that comes out um but yeah, absolutely stunning. And that's almost like a trident um, in there from the, uh, the, the pattern that we actually made. But I'm gonna get you some close-ups of these as well. Um, but so far, do you know what? Petri effect seems to work. This is the, uh, the mainly blue one. Again, absolutely stunning. Just the detail on them. Um, it's something that I don't think I've seen in any other form of artwork. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, I'm getting really excited now for some of these bigger ones so that we can see what they actually look like. Um, but I will get you some close-ups at the end as well. Let's go for these squares next. Wow. Look at that. The design on it as well. It's, it's really actually picked up on it. In fact, I'm going to move you across over here. And hopefully we can get a bit more light on this. But um, yeah, really, really good results. Beautiful. And again, the colours are actually really, really vibrant. Um, they're not coming up properly on camera at the minute. So I'm going to have to figure out a new lighting method, I think, for these. 
at the end just to show you all the different results that we got. Again, the heart within a heart. That kind of worked as well. I was quite happy with that. And the little pinkish red one as well. Really, really stunning. So, so far, we've not had a blob either, which is what I was worried about, especially with it being the first, first time. Um, wow, look at that. It's almost like a, a little wave in there. But I am gonna try and get some finer detailed shots of these because the detail is absolutely amazing. Wow, pink and green. You know what, it works. One of the bigger circles now, which is almost like the trident flame is what I went for. Um, and again, I think that's come out really, really well. And that one's almost like uh, a little galaxy in there. But you know what? I am really impressed with these. For the first attempt, I think, um, we have done amazingly well. And you know what, it just shows. If we can do it, you can as well. Where are we going next? Wow. That one's almost got a scratched effect in it or a trident, depending on how you look at it. And I'll tell you what, the um, the uh, bubble eliminator machine seems to have worked as well, because I haven't seen a big bubble yet. Now we're getting to the bigger ones. Hopefully this is, oh, wow. Again, look at that. The different shades of, of pink and green as they mix together with that dark background. Absolutely stunning. I love this one. It's almost got like a ribbon effect at the top. Um, again, it's sort of a pinky greeny color, but it's almost got like a ribbon going through it as well, as well as that Petri effect on the background. Now these two, I think will be really exciting, hopefully. Um, and then we've got the, the larger square keychains that we did. So I'm gonna go with this one first. Wow, look at that. It's almost like a flame, a graduated flame. And that swirl going through, it just adds that little bit of detail. Oh, this has to be my favorite so far. Look at that. And then you can just make out that blue iridescent powder that we put on the backing coming through as well. Absolutely stunning. And now for the, the key ring effect ones that we went for. We're really intrigued to see what these see, turned out like as well. With it being a slightly deeper mold, but wow. Look at that. That pattern in there, it's just, it's almost like little bits of, of fluff, basically. Wow, look at that. It's almost like, um, um, again, I went for that sort of trident design and it's almost like it's a trident underwater in the sea. That has to be my favourite, I think, so far. Absolutely beautiful. And this one with the, the different variations of the purple to pink, again, absolutely stunning. 
Now I have noticed that I think some of the UV hasn't fully cured on the back yet. So I am gonna give these a quick recure afterwards and I'm probably gonna end up um, adding a bit of a domed layer on the back. So again, maybe just give it a bit more time if you're backing them. But I don't think there's one that I've not been happy with. And because we use the, um, the debubbling machine as well, there isn't uh, many bubbles in these, which I was worried about with micro bubbles. So again, if you haven't got one of those, um, the discount code is CCUK to get yourself a discount. Again, look at that. Wow. I love the depth on these as well. Um, and then if you look at them from the side, you almost get that ribbon effect where you can see where it's elevated. Another sort of trident design that we went for as well. Absolutely stunning. These are, they are like glass. Um, and then with those cool effects from the Petri effect inside, absolutely amazing. Oh, we have a new favourite. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. And you can just see that the blue iridescent powder popping through as well. Again, not fully cured with the UV, so I am going to cure these again for a couple of minutes. But that is amazing. Probably where I went a little bit thick on the, um, the black mica powder, to be honest. So again... That's a lesson for us all, but that has to be my, my absolute favorite there. And then the last one. Wow, look at that. Again, it's like natural flames just popping out with all those different gradients. So yeah, for a first attempt, I think we've been pretty successful with that. Um, let me know your thoughts in comments. Let me know uh, what you think, but I'm going to try and get some more detailed pictures for you all. Just having real problems with camera stands at the minute and finding the right one to actually get the best actual look of them. But absolutely stunning. So happy with this for a first attempt. Which one's your favourite? But again, it just shows that Petri effect. Take your time, use the right inks, and it will come out, you know? Just takes a little bit of time, probably a little bit more patience than what I actually had. Um, but these are absolutely stunning. So there you have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, there'll be lots more content coming out. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, that will keep this content coming um, and hopefully the tutorials as well. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe. We've also recently opened our Etsy shop as well. So if you want to have a look in there, feel free to do so. And we will see you on the next one. Mix the hues, create those trees of beauty make. Throw it on, let's see what happens. This is fun, it's pure passion. The colors are bright, it's a sight to see. If we can do it, you can too. Just follow me, like and subscribe. Custom carving UK, brand new. Powders, watch the colors twirl. Clouds on, respirator tight.